All right guys, so I've got another quick video about how you can change the color of a console. Um, this is the original console for Krusty. And one of the reasons I'm wanting to change it is uh, these points in here where you screw your bolts in. I've had some cracks that it's breaking and shattering. I've tried to glue them together. It's not really a huge deal because you can get it in there and it's fine. It'll do where it, it'll sit where it's supposed to be. But I found this console uh, at one of the pull-aparts, and one of the cool things about him is that he has this really neat little box on the front, a little storage box that connects. And I thought about morphing this so that it would actually screw into the face of this console, but. The issue with that is the way that it's put together, it actually bolts on, it's, it's truly manufactured for this piece to go into that, um, to, to be uh, on there real solid. In order to attach it to this one, I would almost have to ruin this by drilling a bunch of holes in it. So basically I wanna take this blue, this is the original blue tone and it's faded to this weird greenish gray. But SEM makes a type of color coat that's made specifically for inner plastics, your vinyls, uh, even carpet color. It says that you can apply this to that. So I'm gonna be using this. This uh, is uh, the closest I could get would be a, like a bluebird brown is what they call it. And then you use uh, also a plastic adhesion promoter also by SEM. So I'm gonna go through this process. I'm gonna disassemble this guy, prep it, and then paint it. And We'll see on this sunny day if it'll dry in enough time that I can get it installed in the van. It's amazing how the difference between the color of what was protected by the hardware, look at the blue, and then look at how much it's faded. I guess whoever had left this wherever it was parked, it just sat open for the longest time and just cooked in the sun and faded all that, that color out of it. And then this is the uh, outside of the uh, the storage box, there's your inner mounting piece. This attaches to the face. So the first thing I've been told to do with this is to degrease it, wipe it down with some cleaner. I was told to use uh, by my upholstery and uh, car restoration friend to use 409 on these plastic parts. I'm going to end up using Fantastic because I don't have any 409. So I'm basically just going to wipe everything down really well. This ABS is fragile, so you have to keep that in mind when you're doing this. You don't want to overly put too much pressure on this. If you do, you could. There's always a possibility you'll snap something. I don't even need to spray paint that because that is all covered. Okay, so this interior piece, I'm not even going to paint. There's no need. It's just the outer shell is all I need to really be concerned about. Well, before I even rinse it, I'm going to just sand it. I'm going to use some 400 grit because I don't have 600. thing you have to do after you do all of that stuff is you need to rinse it off. So I'm gonna let those guys dry. I'm going to put some uh, of this material which is SEM or SEM 39 863, it's plastic adhesion promoter. I'm gonna do a light coat and let it sit for five minutes. And then I'm gonna do a heavier coat and let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes before I actually do the paint. So 
So we're supposed to let this set for five minutes. So now I'm gonna do a second real quick coat. So this time I gotta let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. The timer just went off. When you apply this SIM color coat, you wanna do it in very light coats because the light coats are gonna penetrate through and into the plastic. If you were to heavily coat this the very first time, it's not gonna allow that, pen the penetration is gonna be very minor and it's not gonna do what it's supposed to do. And you need about five to 10 minutes in between each coat depending on how warm it is. And then once you start getting it to where it's starting to hide, and then you can put on a heavy coat in the end. The other thing is you need to shake this up like any typical rattle can. I mean, when you first uh, depress this, you want to kind of hold it off to the side. You prime the tip and you'll get a good even flow the first time you do it without any spitting. Okay, I'm going to go. hit five minutes on the timer seven minutes so this is coat number two now set the timer again seven more minutes 45 seconds till my next coat I'm gonna go ahead and start on this one. This is coat number three, by the way. Coat number four. Coat number five. And already it is really impressive how good a finish this is. One more coat, I think we're good. That should do it. I think that does it. Now I'm going to evacuate the tip by turning it upside down. A couple of pumps there. Good. Cleans that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these inside tonight and let them just cure. I'm not going to put it all back together today. But um, by the looks of it, it looks like it did full coverage all the way around. Oh, here's a good point. If you've got sun damage on your on your parts, if you were to put a fresh coat of this type of um, colorant on there, it's just one more layer of protection against that sun damage, against the UV light. This is Krusty's original um, console. Look at the color. It's a little more bright, but um, you know, the console sits all by itself in between the seats. I am going to say that this is going to match perfectly. I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. So pretty exciting to look at that and see how close that is. Yeah, I can't wait to see it in place. So I've got my cup of coffee and it's been a couple of days since uh, the plastic has cured for the console. Uh, 
you don't have to wait that long to let them cure but because of work and uh, my scheduling and the weather I just haven't been able to film again for a little bit so I'm gonna reassemble this guy and then go ahead and put him reinstall him and we'll see how it looks Do not want to over tight any of this stuff. You'll crack the ABS plastic. So you don't want to do that. Now, I didn't paint this simply because it's hidden. You never really see that. this on the outside just like so oh there we go put in the four-wheel drive shifting boot I guess you'd kind of call this a boot that you have a pin you have a hole right here so that rubber pin goes through that metal hole and you attach them like that in there all right so the next thing to do is to put the boot on and I've got a good couple of tears in it already because of the, I think the hinges have caught some points on it. But I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall it right now before I do another one. Basically goes in like so. Alright people, so there we have it. I do have this part, but I can't figure out how to get it to glue in there properly yet. That's for the emergency brake side. I'm going to leave it off. So now we're going to install this thing. Don't over tighten it. I cannot state that enough. In fact, you might want to leave them a little bit loose to get everybody seated. All in all, I would say that looks amazing. You look at this and this and the light really really impressed at how well that did turn out looks great so that's how you make this look nice and match it up to your color that you have I think it looks awesome I love it you'd never even know I don't think especially once I cleaned it all up so once again I hope that video was helpful until next time continue to uh, keep an eye out more videos to come We've got the wool project and the uh, paneling that's happening. Make sure if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell. I appreciate it. Have a good one.